Hello, my name is Alex with 8Pix Tutorials, and today we're going to be doing the last step of creating your first Jira project. If you haven't already, I have three other videos, so I would recommend you go check them out if you haven't checked them out already. And in those three videos, I walk you through how to set up your Atlassian ID to get started and basically buy Jira. I also talk about the differences between Kanban and Scrum and bug tracking. And then I go into a very, very in-depth analysis of the differences between a company and a team managed configuration. In this last video, we're going to be clicking the blue button because if you haven't, again, seen that video, I recommend to always go blue. And we're gonna be essentially creating that very first project and this is the last step. There's a lot of good information in this last step. So you are going to basically want to watch all these four videos for this series of creating a Jira project. Now, last thing here is if you haven't, please, please, please subscribe and like this video because it helps me know that you like these videos. If you have any comments about anything we've talked about in either this video or the last three videos, uh, please feel free to drop a comment. I would be, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be addressing all of those questions and comments and uh, I do appreciate the subscribe. So let's jump into finishing the creation of your first Jira project. All right, so at this point, you pretty much know the differences between a simplified and an expert level configuration. So we're gonna click the blue button because again, that is what my personal recommendation is. And we're gonna be talking about these add project details. Now at this point, the, you still have an opportunity to change the template between Kanban and Scrum. This is not too important because I'm going to show you in the next video why it's not too important, but it's not the, like, don't trip up if you pick the wrong one here. It's okay if you pick Scrum or you want it Kanban and it's okay if you pick Kanban and you want it Scrum at this point. You you still have the option to go back, right? Just basically undo everything we've done to point. But if you get this far and you're like, you're just having to change your heart and you feel like you changed the, pick the wrong one, don't even worry. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to change all this in future videos. But if, if you absolutely like, right, if that OCD is kicking in and you want to absolutely get the right one, feel free to hit that back button and change it or, or click on change template and that'll get you back to the right spot so you can get back to this one. So for the purpose of this video, I'm sticking with Kanban because I'm going to be discussing a Kanban project first in my next series. And then we're going to go into the Scrum one, right? So I'm just picking Kanban because again, I'm setting myself up for the future videos that I'm going to be making here. But if this is for you and your team and you guys are officially Scrum, uh, go ahead and change the template and pick Scrum. But I wanted to talk about what you get here and um, what's, what information you need to know. So this is gonna be a quick video, um, but I'm just gonna discuss these project details. All right, so the first thing here, let me zoom in a little bit more here. So the first thing you get is this, uh, you basically gotta give a name to your project, right? You're getting a Jira project workspace is what um, we're calling it, okay? And and you can't think of a project in Jira like a traditional like project management project, okay? Because Jira is really a container, right? It's it's really like, I know Jira itself is like Microsoft project in a, in a, in a sense, right? But you also have to treat your Jira project, the, the thing that we're creating as like the Microsoft project, right? And so you wouldn't, you wouldn't go and create like a whole new Microsoft project for a different effort, right? You would want to basically contain it all. Maybe you just have different tabs or different files, but it's all contained within that same uh, tool, right? And so this is kind of the same concept here, right? A lot of teams that I see trying to use Jira, right? They have like, they create a project per release or or they create a project per phase, or they create a project for like every effort that the same team is working on, right? And this is a very quick way to to really dilute your Jira experience because a single Jira project is designed to accommodate multiple phases, multiple iterations, multiple releases, multiple functionalities, multiple capabilities, heck, even multiple teams, right? And so you don't need all of these Jira projects configured or set up for every effort that you're doing, right? So if you're working on like V1 and V2 and V3 of a piece of software, you don't need three V1, V2, V3 Jira projects. You just need one with three versions in it, right? And so all this is gonna make a little bit more sense once we jump into the actual projects 
right? And just look for the appropriately titled video. But for now, my recommendation is start with a generic name, maybe for the team or for the organization. So for example, if you're like, if this is engineering, it's this engineering project. If this is for finance, this is the finance project, right? So this, that's kind of the mentality that I want you to have when you, when you're thinking about how I should structure my Jira projects. And actually probably gives me a good idea to make a, how to configure, how to organize your Jira projects video, um, in the future. But for now, again, at a little out of scope because we're just talking about starting your first project. So, um, team name would be my recommendation, right? Just, uh, your cohort, right? Your groups that are working together collaboratively, it should be whatever they identify as, right? So we're just going to call this demonstration project, right? And what you're going to notice is this key auto populated and the key is taking the first character of pretty much every word, right? So if you have four or five words, six, or seven words and your title and your name, then the key is going to be six or seven characters, right? And so while you can change the project name at will, whenever you want with minimal impact, the DP is a little bit trickier. Jura gives you the ability to change the key. Okay. But if I hover over this little thing, right, choose a descriptive prefix for your um, projects issue key to recognize the work on this project. But what they're not telling you is if you have a change of heart and you want to change your key while possible has the potential to break things for you. Right. And it won't break things in Jira because Jira is going to, their, their database is going to basically restructure itself with that new key. But if your team saves a link or they hard coded a link, or they just, they don't know that the, that the link changed, right. That the key changed because that, that key is going to be in the URL for your, for every issue. Right. Then that can cause some trouble with your team because then they'll think Jira is broken or something. Right. So just be very mindful of right now is your opportunity to get this right. If you want to, again, if you have a change of heart later, you can, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it, it, it is something that uh, I've seen teams trip themselves up when they try to change the key. And out of the hundreds of teams that I've coached, I've only seen like one or two teams ever have a good enough need to change the key. Usually by just changing the name, you can get away with it. But again, that OCD, if you need to have the name match the key, then I, I mean, again, it's possible. Just, just be mindful of, of potential pitfalls. Um, what you don't see here, <laughs> because I don't have the premium um, version or the, even the standard for that matter. But what you don't see is the ability to use the template of another Jira project, right? So basically when you create a new Jira project, you can actually tell Jira, I want to copy all the settings from a different project. And so if you think a little bit like if you're preparing yourself for future self, right? Like, or you're just preparing yourself to be nice to the future version of you, you can actually go in and create a template project, right? You can just create like template project and, and get that configured the way you want it, right? The, the, same, the right issue types, the right workflows, the right screens, the right everything. And then future Jira projects, when you are creating them, they can just leverage that. There's some pros and cons to that. I'm going to be discussing that in a future video, but just know that um, with the premium or at least standard, uh, with the paid version, I should just say, right. You get the ability to, again, select that template or, or that project that, you, that you're going to use as a template. And then the last thing you get here is connect repositories, documents, and more. Um, you can do this by just clicking on it, right? Um, this is going to be basically pulling in Confluence and Bitbucket and a couple of other tools. That's a little bit more advanced than what I would like to cover in this video. So I'm going to leave that checkbox deselected and we're going to hit create project. So once you hit this, Jira is going to actually take a couple seconds and it's going to go and create that Jira project. So this is your very first Jira project. And now many, many hours later, <laughs> it's actually it's probably taking like 30 minutes worth of a video here, but about 30 minutes later, you got yourself your first Jira project. It, I mean, I make these in five minutes usually. So it doesn't take 30 minutes, but I'm just describing everything on what you do. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to be taking a deeper look into a couple of things, right? So I'm going to have a series of videos where I'm going to be talking about the navigation of what's going on here. I'm going to be doing 
a series of videos on the administration of a company managed project. And then I'm going to be doing another set of videos on the administration of a team managed project. I'm also going to then be doing a series of videos of just global administration across Jira. And then we're going to be talking about like agile project management within Jira. Um, we're going to, there's a lot of videos. I guarantee you, I got at least 200 videos planned in my pipeline here. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video because I got a ton of videos coming your way. We're going to be jumping into this navigation here in the next video. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. And if you have any questions about anything I've covered to date, uh, please feel free to drop a comment. Um, also, I am available for hire, right? So this is what I do for a living. I, I spend 12, 14 hours a day helping businesses all around the world configure or get started with Jira. So if this is something I can help you out with. Make sure you check out the link in the description. You will see my contact information, the website. I got books. I got blog posts. I got specialized training. I got whatever you need to help you on your Jira journey. It's there. And so I want to help you and I want to become a part of it. So if you find any value here or if you feel like you just need a little bit more hands on, um, feel free to check out the description and you'll see all the important information that you need there. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking this video. Uh, we are going to be starting a really great journey here. And so welcome everybody that wants to join me on this journey. Um, but it's going to be a fun one. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.